Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to start talking about trigonometric functions of angles. We've been dealing with trigonometric functions of real numbers and we also defined our trig functions in terms of right triangles and today we're going to talk about trig functions of angles and we'll actually see that all three of these definitions are linked together and in a certain sense can be thought of as equivalent. So let's take a look. So first a definition. Let theta be an angle in standard position and let PXY be a point on the terminal side. So remember the terminal side of the angle in standard position. Then the distance from the origin to P is R, which is the square root of X squared plus Y squared and... Now before I go ahead and define our trig functions, let me just draw a little picture for us so we can see what's happening. I'm saying I have an angle in standard position, so I have an XY coordinate plane my angle in standard position means that I'm using the x-axis as my initial side. This is my terminal side here. So here's my angle theta between the initial side and the terminal side. Now I'm saying that I'm going to take some point P on my terminal side, PXY, let's go ahead and draw this down here. So this distance here is my Y, this distance from the origin to uh, this point here is my x. And just by using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that this y and x are my short sides of the triangle. So over here I have my hypotenuse. In other words, if I call this distance r, it's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Right, just from my Pythagorean theorem. So this is our diagram. Now we can define our trig functions for theta in terms of this diagram, where I'm going to define sine of theta as being the ratio between y and r, cosine of theta as the ratio between x and r, tangent of theta as the ratio between y and x. Now of course here I have a requirement, remember we can't divide by zero, so tangent of theta is only defined when x is not equal to zero. Uh, in other words, if I have an angle of pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, or all those angles we're used to with real numbers, um, those angles will still not be defined at tangent. I have that my cosecant of theta, we know cosecant of theta is just 1 over sine, or in other words here r over y, now here I need that y is not equal to zero, I can't divide by zero. Secant of theta, we know is the reciprocal of cosine, so this is going to be r over x, where x is not equal to zero. And cotangent of theta, the reciprocal of tangent, or x over y, and of course I need that y is not equal to zero. So this is how we define the trig functions of angles. Given any angle, if we put that angle in standard position, we're going to have a terminal side. We can take any point on that terminal side. Now, I just wrote P, X, Y. I could have just chosen a point here, call it P prime, and I'd have a Y value here and an X value here. Now notice that I still have a right angle here. I still have an angle of theta, so that means that these two angles, whatever they are, are the same. So we have similar triangles. Right? So we know that the ratios of the sides are going to be the same in these two triangles. In other words, it doesn't matter which point P we choose. So long as it rests on our terminal side, these definitions for the trig functions will all give us the same value. Okay. Now, let's take a look at how this uh, connects with what we've done so far. Let's take a look at our unit circle. Oh, and first of all, notice that we could have derived these definitions just by using SOHCAHTOA, couldn't we? We have this right triangle. My angle theta is here in the bottom left of the triangle, so x here is my adjacent side, y is my opposite side, and r is my hypotenuse. And we look at these definitions here, y over r is the same as opposite over hypotenuse, x over r is adjacent over hypotenuse, etc. So our definition for a right triangle with SOHCAHTOA matches up exactly with our definition for the angles. Now let's take a look at how this matches up with our real numbers. If I take a look at some P on my terminal side, and I take that P so that it's on the unit circle, so whatever PXY is, I chose the PXY on this terminal ray that intersects my unit circle. 
we see here that we're going to be coming back exactly to the definitions that we had in chapter 5 where we defined the trig functions of real numbers. Right? Here my radius is 1, so in other words, my hypotenuse of the right triangle is 1, and I have that sine of theta. We define this to be y over r, but here r is 1, so I have y over 1, which is just y. Cosine of theta, this is x over r, r is 1, so this is just x. Tangent of theta, we define the exact same way. Right? We already have that this is y over x, etc. And we see that if we take the angle definition and we choose our point on the terminal side to be the point where that terminal side intersects with the unit circle, we end up coming back exactly to the definition we had in chapter 5, didn't we? We're taking this terminal point now. We can think of this as if I traveled around, I'm reaching this terminal point just in a different way. And we still get an x value and a y value in the unit circle, and we can define our trig functions the same way. So everything that we've learned, all three of these definitions for trig functions are easily relatable to each other. But for the rest of this course, we're mostly going to be focusing on the angle definition. We're going to be dealing with lots of triangles, and we're going to be dealing with polar coordinates and things of this nature. So um, it's going to be convenient for us to remember these definitions here, y over r, x over r, y over x or just keep in mind what we mean by the angle definition. Now really we're going to be using mostly SOHCAHTOA, but um, that's still the definition in terms of the angles. Now just like in chapter 5 where we had reference numbers, we're going to have reference angles here that are going to help us to easily solve out these trig functions evaluated at any angle just by knowing the trig functions for angles here in quadrant 1. So we'll go over that in the next video and we'll do some examples. And we'll see you there.